Hey BookTube, welcome back. So I finished a couple books recently. I wanted to get these out of the way before apocalypse a starts September 1st, so hope you guys are all joining me on my read -a for the month of September. Apocalyptic books, I'll put a link down below. Uh, anyway, I recently heard a, about a book on Matthew Sharapa's channel that he read and absolutely gushed about, and just hearing him talk about it really intrigued me enough to want to pick it up, even though he didn't really reveal a whole lot about the book and that's kinda why I want to keep it with you guys as well because it's a difficult book to describe anyway and you don't want to tell too much going in. Um, the book is Vita Nostra and it is by uh, Marina and Sergei Diachenko and we follow a young girl by the name of Sasha who is at the seaside with her mom just ready to enjoy a nice leisure vacation she keeps seeing this mysterious man Everywhere she goes, he seems to be following her. She's getting really freaked out. Every time she sees him, she gets so frightened. She just says, I wish this were a dream. I wish this were a dream. And she wakes up back in her room, starting the day over again. Sees him again, same thing. I wish this were a dream. Boom, she's back in her room. And she seems to be caught in this sort of loop that she can't get out of. And it's just going to continue on and on until she realizes she has to confront this man. And she does. And he compels her to do this very strange task to get up in the morning, four in the morning, before anybody else is up and around, go to the beach, take all her clothes off, swim out to the buoy, touch the buoy, swim back. She does this for fear that if she doesn't, this situation will continue. And when she gets back to the beach, she feels sick and throws up these strange coins with weird markings on it. And this sets off this whole journey she ends up on. He tells her to keep the coins until he comes to collect them, but she's to do this every morning. Um, it was, that was enough I was alone to make me wonder, what is this all about? What is this leading to? What are these coins? Why is he making her do this? It's, it's a beautifully written book. It's intriguing. It's mysterious. And I think that's the best way to kind of keep it, you know, to go into it kind of blind, slightly blind, but just a little hint of intrigue. Like I said, uh, I'll put a link to his, his review below. Uh, it was, it was kind of funny hearing him want to tell you more, but not want to tell you more at the same time. That's how I'm going to kind of leave it as well, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, another book I finished uh, was finally the third book by Don Kurtigich. This is Teeth in the Mist. This is sort of loosely based on the Faust myth about the man selling his soul to the devil. Uh, this follows three different women in three different timelines. We start out in 1583 following a young woman, a um, young bride named Hermione. Her husband is planning on building a mill house up on this mountain oddly where there is no actual water to turn the wheel. So there, everyone's wondering why he's building this. There's some strange thing going on on this particular mountain. And it'll affect uh, these other two women later on in the future. We have uh, 1851, there's a 17-year-old woman, a young woman named Rowan Edgington, and she is uh, recently sort of orphaned. Her, her father has died and she's uh, sent uh, to Mill House. Uh, she's seen a letter that her father had written to this man who um, li lives at Mill House asking him to look after her daughter. This is all written before there were any signs that anything uh, was wrong with her father. Uh, he wasn't sick or anything at the time, so why was he writing this letter? Or who was this man? She doesn't even know. He's never. Her father never talked about him. Um, so there's all, this whole mystery going on about this, but she's not the only one that ends up there. There's um, also Emma and her, her brother, Sean, uh, Seamus, sorry, Seamus, um, who are also wards there as well. They arrive at the same time. And then we also follow in, like, the present day, a uh, young 16-year-old by the name of Zoe. Um, she has some connection to this house as well. Uh, her father had gone there. Something happened to him, and he's never been the same since he came back. There's uh, lots of... Um, mysticism and kind of witchcraft and things kind of tied up with this house and uh, following all these stories was really interesting. Uh, she does a really great job of, of description and kind of pulling you into the story um, but there was a little bit of a drag I felt um, within the middle of the book. Um, the story focuses a lot more on Rowan so it wasn't kind of evenly spaced between all the characters and I was a little bit confused I have to say at the end of it so I didn't quite love it as much as the other two which I absolutely adored but it still was an intriguing read, and I did enjoy my time going through the book. It also, uh, as always, all of her books are pretty much filled with all these visual um, enticements through there. There's letters and um, pictures and backwards writing within this. And uh, we, it's, 
interesting kind of learning more and more about the characters as the story um, unraveled. But, oh, there's my neighbor back there cleaning up the yard. Hello! <laughs> anyway, uh, I did really enjoy it. And then the last one I read uh, was a horror book by Darcy Coates. This is uh, Craven Manor. I'd heard a lot about this one before. It's just a really good kind of creepy ghost story. She does a fantastic job with the setting as well and, and the depiction of this kind of manor buried in the woods. Uh, we follow a young man named Daniel who's desperate for a job. He's currently living with his cousin Kyle who kind of picked him up off the streets, you might say. Uh, he has kind of menial jobs that he does uh, to help pay the rent, uh, but he's a very generous young man. He also gives money to um, an elderly woman that lives in the apartment complex uh, to help her take care of her cats or whatever she happens to need. And she's been very kind to him, you know, baking things for him and stuff like that. So he does look out for her, even though he has very little money as his own. But his cousin's a bit of a shit, I'll say. Even though he helped him out, um, he ends up saying he's going to get another roommate to help pay the rent. And this particular one he brings in is like, you know, buying video games and things like that, entertainment and stuff. So he kind of ends up shoving his cousin to the side, kicking him out of the room. as oh, you can like bed down in the living room or whatever. And so Daniel's not too thrilled with this new arrangement and stuff. And uh, one day there's a letter slid underneath the door of their apartment addressed to Daniel um, with an offer of a job as a groundskeeper at Craven Manor. There's no actual address for this place, just a direction to get there. He goes and checks it out. It's pretty creepy. He's not sure of it, but um, once he's been moved out of his room, he's like, you know, he, he's not going to have this. He's going to go ahead and try this job out, and it gets pretty creepy. Um, it, like, there's a whole lot going on in here, a lot of things that he uncovers, and um, just seeing how he reacts to it, and um, the little other side thing that happens with his cousin, I wasn't expecting, but it was really, really good. I, I really was drawn throughout the whole book, and I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to reading something else by her. Uh, definitely has a a really good creep factor. I mean, you might want to save this for a Halloween read, but I, like I said, I was just looking for something kind of quick to read before apocalypse -a and uh, this was just kind of calling my name, because this is, this is a cover buy for me. This, is, this ticks all the boxes on, on what I'm looking for in, in a horror story, so... Uh, yeah, that's what I've read so far. Um, like I said, uh, Apocalypse of On starts tomorrow, so I'm getting things lined up, trying to decide what I want to read next. And uh, hopefully you guys will join me. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.